thank you everybody for joining us today for our uh, webinar titled Healthy Eating for Active Aging. Today we're learning about the importance of healthy eating, including a live cooking demo by our special guest speaker, Rose Reisman. Rose is an award-winning entrepreneur, caterer, author, and media personality, not to mention a mother of four and grandmother of four. And as a registered nutritional consultant armed with an MBA, Rose has taken her passion for healthy living and developed it into a multifaceted enterprise, making her one of Canada's leading authorities on the art of living well. <laughs> Among her many accomplishments, Rose has published 19 cookbooks, including her latest book, Meal Revolution, that is centered around Canada's recently updated food guide. In it, Rose's recipes provide Canadians with accessible insights on how to use the guide to eat well and lower your risk of obesity, heart and stroke disease, diabetes type 2, certain cancers and autoimmune diseases. Um, Rose was, is going to be starting with a brief presentation. Um, and at, after that presentation, we can open things up for a few questions. If you'd like to type them into the chat box at any time, and we will we'll take them up after the uh, that that presentation, and then we will follow that with a cooking demo. And I think uh, we can possibly take questions throughout the demo as well. And um, I look forward to seeing all of that myself. So, Rose, without further ado, I will pass it over to you to get going. Thank you so much. A pleasure. All right, and I'll just have to say, because I'm not controlling the slides, next slide, please. So I've been in the industry of health and fitness and wellness for, oh my goodness, I don't want to tell you my age, but well over three decades. Uh, it's been also a personal journey for myself. My family all had heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and I was very concerned about going in that route. So I changed my ways back in my 30s. And from there, I've written about 20, 21 cookbooks, all based on healthy recipes and nutrition, uh, opened a catering company, had personal gourmet, which is fresh or frozen food to your door. We served about 2000 lunches to children throughout Toronto and really trying to tell people from an early age how important it is to eat better. And as we age, you're going to see through my demonstration, my presentation, it's even more important as you age. Next, please. So healthy eating for active aging. It's very important one for energy and disease. Next. So why is healthy eating so important? Well, one in four seniors suffer from malnutrition. It's going to, healthy eating will provide energy, nutrients to your body, it will prevent the risk of chronic disease such as diabetes, uh, even Alzheimer's, dementia, we're seeing healthy eating plays a part in heart disease, obesity, and prevents muscle and bone loss, which is very important as we age. If our balance is not as good, we can fall and break a bone so easily and improving our immune system, which we've seen, I think, over the last two years is so important. Next. So why do we have to eat healthy? Well, as we age, there are many changes happening in our body. One is our appetite. Our appetite seems to get more diminished. And that could be often from just lack of movement. Uh, we're just not moving around as much. We're not that concerned about cooking or preparing food. Your taste or smell also may have decreased. And what that does is it ultimately ends up making food not as important to you. Or you end up adding tons and tons of salt, which we all know is not healthy. Shopping can become more of a chore. Is it mobility? Is it the fact that it takes too long to get to your, your, your shopping store or you're not driving any longer? So that can become a challenge. Also preparing meals. You know, when the kids were around, uh, you know, cooking and shopping and, and time for cooking was all, all there was. I mean, I love it now on Sunday nights. I have my whole family over. There's 13 people and it's a big effort. But as they start to go their own ways, um, will I want to do that? I'm not sure. And ultimately, medications that we're on can affect our appetite, good and bad. Next, please. So changes in lifestyle. If we're eating alone more, when we're eating alone, we just don't put the same effort in. I know when my husband travels, 
I just don't put the same effort in. I kind of scrounge around the fridge and the cupboard to see what there is to eat. I'm not as inspired. Uh, maybe you're in a new kitchen. Maybe you've moved into a new home or a senior residence and the kitchen is, is foreign to you. You were used to your old stove or your old fridge. And ultimately cooking for one, there's studies that show there's decreased quantity and quality of food intake when you're just cooking for one. So very interesting uh, what we find out. Next, please. Healthy eating habits. This is simple, but not so simple for people to do on a daily basis. Variety is a key. So variety meaning you eat everything. There's no such thing as elimination of foods when you're eating well as you age. One, fruits and vegetables galore. A uh, whole grain. So we're trying to not get rid of, but lessen the amount of white rice, white pasta, white flour products. You want more whole grain, especially 100% whole grain. Um, you want protein, but we're trying to also decrease the amount of red meat protein. We want more chicken, fish, and plant-based proteins in our diet. Spices and herbs. When we start to lose our flavors a bit, as I said before, we add more salt. Not a good thing. So now we have to start using dried or fresh herbs and spices, which can add a great element to your food as well as uh, a health element as well. And eating cooked or raw veggies, if it gives you digestion or heartburn, then cook them. Don't worry so much about the nutrients lost when you're cooking them. It's more important you consume those uh, vegetables than not consume them. Next, please. So protein, I wanna talk a little bit about protein because it's really important. Believe it or not, we lose between three to 8% of our muscle mass each decade after our 30s. That is not good. That's why you'll see thinner arms, thinner legs, no muscle definition in our bodies. It's very important that we actually have more protein now than we did when we were younger. And again, what I said is a more plant-based diet, not saying you have to be a vegetarian or a vegan, but introduce more beans, nuts, whole grains like quinoa is a complete protein. So we have to start looking at that. And I'm sure we read that all over. Our kids are telling us that, but very, very important that we look at our protein amount. Next, please. Complex carbs. So you know what? Like, you know, everybody's screaming, don't eat carbs, you get fat. That's not true. You don't get fat from eating carbs. You can gain weight if you're eating nothing but sugar, uh, white rice, white flour. Why? Because there's not enough nutrients. There's not enough fiber to fill you up. So when we talk about complex carbs, I'm talking about fruits and vegetables, beans, nuts, grains. Those are complex carbs. And we want those because they give us fiber and B vitamins. And also it helps keep you regular because perhaps if you're on certain medication, you might find that you're not as regular as you can be. Carbs will help that. Also, if you're lacking exercise, that will also help. The more exercise you have, the more regularity you'll have. But those carbs are essential in your diet. Next, please. So the healthy fats, fat's good. You know, in, in my day and age, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, it was like, oh, no fat. My daughter today yells at me about saying, don't watch the amount of fat, but you want the healthy fats in your diet, which are the mono and polyunsaturated. So for those, we have everything from the oils, the good oils are canola, extra virgin olive oil, soft margarine, not hard, sunflower oil is also good, peanut oil is good. Now, why healthy fats matter so much? They've shown studies that it increases longevity, it reduces chronic pain, it lowers our bad cholesterol, the LDL, and diabetes, it can actually help manage our blood sugar levels. And they're now also looking at studies for healthy fats and dementia, reducing the plaque in our brain. Very important. Next slide. And unhealthy fats. We probably know what those are. Anything that's hard. So think of a rib roast, delicious during Thanksgiving or Christmas, and you see the white marble. That's a hard saturated fat. What you see that meat does when it's cold is what it's going to do to your heart over time if you eat too much of it. Also, um, unhealthy fats lead to obesity, which can lead to diabetes. And we're showing that it also can increase plaque in the brain. So when we think of unhealthy fats, coconut oil, and there's been a lot of hype on coconut oil today in terms of being very healthy, but it's still a saturated fat. Butter, I love butter when I go to a restaurant, I love a pat of butter on some sourdough bread. But again, keep that 
at the bottom. Don't be having butter every single day on your toast. Um, ghee, you know, in Indian cooking, ghee is very, very popular. Um, coconut oil, coconut, we, we spoke about coconut oil being also um, saturated. Crisco, even though it says it's a vegetable oil, it's still a form of a saturated fat. So we really want to be careful of limiting those fats that will clog our arteries. Next slide. And watch excess sodium and sugar. So sodium, we all know, contributes to high blood pressure. But it's not the salt shaker. I've got one right here. It's not the salt shaker that ends up hurting you. It's the salt in processed, frozen, canned, and restaurant food and fast food. So that's where why the taste is so good at McDonald's or a soup in a restaurant is because they're killing you with sodium. So at home, go ahead and put on salt. I like a sea salt. It, it, actually, the granules are larger. It gives you more flavor. But again, we want to be looking at more herbs and spices than sodium and to keep the amount of processed food down to a minimum. Sugar, we all know sugar. I mean, the natural sugar in food is not something you should be worried about. If you have diabetes type two, you can still have fruit with your meals, just you have to watch the portions. The sugar we're talking about is the added sugar to cakes, pastries, your coffee, beverages. Those are the sugars that we wanna cut out. And we're, we're supposed to be having about 25 grams of sugar a day, which is about six teaspoons. We're having about four times that amount. And that usually comes from packaged and processed foods. Sugar ultimately does cause you to gain weight, can lead to obesity, increases inflammation in the body while you might be having more chronic pain and raises triglyceride levels. So we want to be careful of that. And they're also sh showing that sugar can affect our cognitive, um, uh, our cognitive, it can affect us in terms of impairing our cognitive knowledge. So sugar is a culprit, but we can have certain amounts of it because I love sugar. I love having a piece of chocolate. I have a small bit every day. Next slide, please. And drinking water. You know, I usually have a great big, uh, big container of water. I, I have water just in something called Soda Stream, and maybe you've seen it. It's a machine that produces like Perrier or Pellegrino for you. You want water because as we age, our dehydration increases. It can be due to medication, it can be due to kidney function, but you want water throughout the day. Don't feel like you have to guzzle it all down. Just Keep a bottle with you when you walk around. Keep it so that you're always sipping on it and keep conscious of how much you're actually drinking throughout the day. Um, I like to add lemon, oranges, fruit, some ice, lemon twist to my, to my water to make it a little more interesting. Next slide, please. Other ways to hydrate so you don't only have water, fruits and vegetables, fantastic. Watermelon, as you see there, is all water. Cucumbers, all water, zucchinis. So the more fruits and vegetables you have, that counts as your water intake. Low sodium soups, but be careful because sodium can be a real culprit. Uh, soup can be a real culprit of sodium. So you want to look for low sodium. Also low fat dairy. All right. That's fantastic in terms of uh, having more water. And plant-based milks can be very good. Next slide, please. So the ones that we want to avoid, now it shows you juice here and people say, but Rose, if it's apple juice and it's unsweetened, what's wrong with it? But the problem is that to get one cup of orange or apple juice, you need about four apples or four oranges. You're not getting all the nutrients. You're not getting the pulp. You're not getting the skin that adds a lot of nutrients and fills you up because of the fiber. So juice now, as you see with children, when, when I raised my kids, they lived on apple juice. No longer we give kids water today. We also want to cut out any canned pops or bottled pops. Even diet drinks, not a good thing. Artificial sweeteners actually can trick your brain into wanting more sugar. And if you go for those plant beverages I mentioned, beware that one that you see there in the picture. So is chocolate flavored. Guess what that is? Sugar. And coffee beverages are amazing at Starbucks, but you're getting whipped cream, chocolate, and lots of those sugar syrups. So be careful of those. Next slide. Um, shopping. Okay, so shopping made easy. Shopping can be a challenge, and especially during the last two years with COVID, and if you're still worried about going into a supermarket, I started ordering everything online. I mean, I know you may not want the amounts, but Costco, depending on what you eat or what you order, even for paper towel, toilet paper, I order snacks for my grandchildren, Costco delivers in a couple of days. The supermarkets are all delivering. There may be a small charge, but it really saves you the time 
of having to go out being nervous when you go out about COVID. And also what's nice about it is that you may pay a small delivery charge, but you're saving yourself time. And you have to look at saying, if I want healthier food and I really don't want to go out and get it, and you don't want to be ordering in from fast food places, shopping online can be an excellent way to shop to make life easier for yourself. Next slide. And cooking for one or two. So here's a problem, right? You know, like a lot of my cookbooks would say, serve six or eight. You don't want that. There's many cookbooks out there that cook for one or two because you want to have fewer ingredients. You don't want waste. What I like today is that you can go into a metro or a Loblaws and buy ready-made store meals. So they're not frozen and not the processed ones. They actually make them fresh every day. A piece of chicken, a piece of salmon, tofu with a vegetable or a grain. And they're like, eight to ten dollars and I think for a meal that you don't have to shop and shop that's a great thing to do you can actually order those online as well uh the other thing is that you you want to eat with others it's it's really nice to eat with someone else you find that you enjoy your food more chances are you eat healthier when you are eating with someone else as well next slide and when we talk about eating with others Studies have shown that it improves your nutritional uptake when you eat with more people and you eat longer. You don't wolf it down. You don't sit in front of the TV and mindlessly eat. So try to get together with others, let it be family or a few friends. Maybe you don't want that size of crowd today, but just call a best friend and, and, and eat together or cook together. Next slide. So we talk about our diet and chronic disease. So now I'm gonna go through certain nutrients, certain diseases that are affected by what we eat and what we don't eat. Next slide, please. So osteoporosis, we're all, you know, I have borderline osteoporosis and I've been very lucky that I, I eat a very healthy diet. So I don't know why I do, I am on the, fit, the slimmer side. So that could be part of it. But this is where we have weakened bones and increased fracture. You can look at those two pictures and see the difference in our bone density. And when it's more porous, as you see um, on the right, I think that's my, my right, um, you will find that if you fall, that's when you can crack a bone and you know, break a bone and you don't wanna break your hip, you don't wanna break your leg. Rehab time is way too long. And one in four over the age of 65 will end up breaking a bone, usually due to balance and falling. So it's very important to pay attention and maintain a healthier diet and do weight bearing exercises, which help increase the density of your bones. Next, please. So calcium, we all know about calcium and the nutrients that build your bones. Women over the age of 50, men over 71 need at least 1200 milligrams of calcium a day. Now that doesn't mean you should be, you know, shoveling down the supplements. What I find I do is I have some Greek yogurt in the morning that has a lot of calcium. Um, and then maybe I'll take half a, a, a supplement before I go to bed because I'll have more calcium during the day. The good thing about calcium and not only preventing osteoporosis, it can help lower your blood pressure it can lessen the risk of kidney stones. And you find it mostly in dairy, soy, dark green vegetables, and canned salmon. So that might be something now you are eating in your diet or you might want to increase. Next slide. Vitamin D. Calcium needs vitamin D to be absorbed properly. So that's why often you'll see calcium with vitamin D on products or, or supplements. You find vitamin D in fish, eggs, fortified milk, tofu, and cereal. Easy to get in the foods that you're eating every day. Next slide. Now, vitamin K also, people don't know, is also good for preventing osteoporosis. It's an anti-aging vitamin that may prevent heart disease as well. You'll find it in dark greens, prunes, which are just plums, soybeans, avocados. So again, good foods to have, whether it's in your diet or if you're in a home right now and they're serving that, otherwise you know what to add to your list. Next slide. And potassium, big trendy um, uh, vitamin today. It helps lower blood pressure. It helps with kidney disease, preventing kidney disease, gallstones and heart disease. You're gonna find that in bananas, sweet potatoes, salmon, dried apricots and beans. So all the good stuff. Next slide, please. And magnesium. A lack of magnesium can also cause weakened bones. So look at all the foods 
that can relate to osteoporosis. It can also cause headaches, heart issues, and nervousness or anxiety. So tuna, tofu, dark greens, cashews are good. Pumpkin seeds, those are the foods that contain magnesium. Next slide, vitamin B12. So if you're out there, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you may be one suffering from vitamin B12. If you're a heavy duty meat eater, you probably don't have a lack of vitamin B12. It's very good again for bone health and for macular degeneration. So it supports brain function as well. And it's easy to get in terms of meat, chicken, fish, dairy, soy, and the dark greens like the cruciferous vegetables that you see there, broccoli. Next slide, diabetes type two. As you know, we all know what diabetes is. It's where your blood sugar levels are not balance well, increased insulin resistance comes with age. So that's why so many people over 65 have diabetes. So what is affected by this is muscle mass. If you don't have enough muscle mass, you're more prone to get diabetes. If you're overweight, you're more prone to get diabetes. Lack of exercise, you can get diabetes. So why we don't want diabetes, it can lead to heart disease, kidney disease, eye problems, and the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. Next slide, please. Heart and stroke disease. This is a leading cause of death of anyone over 65. It's usually caused by high, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, so what you want to do is try to eat the foods like we talked about, the, those great fats. That helps lower uh, the cholesterol and triglycerides. And you can, uh, you know, you want to increase your omega-3 fatty acids. So that's in your nuts, your extra virgin olive oil, your salmon, avocados, those are the foods you want to increase if you have heart disease or you want to prevent heart disease. Next slide. And obesity, caused usually by processed foods and lack of exercise. It's really that simple. Um, it can lead to diabetes, high blood pressure, and ultimately certain cancers. If you're the body that has an apple-shaped form where most of your fat is in your belly, which most people do, that can be dangerous for organ cancers. So if you have a body that's called like an eggplant where you're bigger from the derriere down, you don't have a much of a risk. But I know most of us tend to gain weight around the belly. So you want to be aware of that. Next slide. Dementia, Alzheimer's, high blood pressure, and diabetes type 2. Why did I classify this all together? There's something, a new term now called diabetes type 3. It's not a medical term yet, but it is when you have high blood sugar, high blood pressure, you increase the plaque in your brain and inflammation, which can lead to Alzheimer's or dementia, which they're now calling diabetes type three. They think it will be a medical term soon, but this is why if you have diabetes now, it could be a precursor to dementia. So again, preventative, preventative, preventative. Can you reverse? Yes, you can reverse many of these illnesses. Can you get rid of diabetes completely and go off insulin? That's a tough one, but if you're on medication, you can definitely lessen the medication. Next slide. And eye health. So we're always told that carrots are so good for our eyes. I, I thought my mother was always just trying to get me to eat more carrots, but do you know what? She was absolutely right. Fruits, vegetables, as you see there, the broccoli, the tomatoes, the melon, the bell peppers, the butternut squash can help with cataracts, macular degeneration, glaucoma, night blindness and dry eyes. So we all have eye issues. So this is something that we could do to just prolong uh, the, the health of our eyes. Next, and I talked about a diet at any age. So you've got children, grandchildren, tell them no extreme diets. I just hate when people call me as a nutritionist and say, okay, I went on this great diet that I saw this movie star and I, I've lost 30 pounds, I feel great. I said, call me back in six months. And usually six months later, they're up 40 pounds because they've gained it back. You can't be on a diet where you're restricting yourself food groups that are healthy and that you enjoy. So somehow we have to figure out a way to be able to eat everything in moderation, eat during the day all the time, which really helps. And cutting out full uh, food groups does not work with no, without any success. Next. Reduced appetite. Okay, one of the ways, if you find you just don't have an appetite today, make sure you're not eating large meals during the day. If you have a very large meal, it causes a lot of indigestion and bloating, which will reduce your appetite for later. Um, and one of the key things is to eat a lot during the day. So I, I, I continually snack. 
So every two, three hours, I'm grazing and I'm eating. And people say, oh, you're eating all the time and you're so lucky, you're slim. I said, no, no, no. It's because I'm eating all the time that I'm slim. So I never get ravenous. Um, also reduced appetite could be because you're not moving enough. Exercise. And again, I don't mean you have to run and, and start you know, getting on the bike and the Peloton. All you need to do is walk. All you need to do is move, do some household chores. That's exercise, regular meals and snacks and have a schedule to when you're going to eat. Otherwise, you might find you're fatigued a lot of the time and that's usually from low blood sugars. Next, healthier convenience foods. So if you, if you know how to read a label, that's important. Just looking for the amount of fat, the protein, the calcium, the saturated fat. Uh, you wanna choose items that have less added sugar less saturated fat and salt and have more fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So frozen food can be good. You got to read the label to make sure. Um, unsweetened um, foods, always look for, let's say, applesauce that's unsweetened. Don't go for the sweetened. Go for the low sodium soups. The bag salads can be excellent if you don't want to be chopping up lettuce. And I'm going to cook soon with a rotisserie chicken, which is fantastic, and you can get three meals out of it. Next, if you're going to have any supplements, these are supplements that are often poorly absorbed and consumed and not consumed enough by, by active agers. So calcium we mentioned, D3, magnesium, and B12. Now you're going to check with your doctor before you start taking that, but those are the, the vitamins and minerals you might be very low on because of the lack of variety in your diet. Next, please and fitness, gotta bite the bullet, you gotta move. As I said, you don't have to become a runner. You need 20 to 30 minutes daily of movement. Now that might sound like a lot to you, but just going for a walk around the block, walking on a tread machine if you have, and it's more important now than when you were younger. Exercise for one, for me, I, I'm an exercise like, alcoholic. I just need to exercise. It reduces my stress, my anxiety, my blood pressure is normal. And also it builds up, that's a weight bearing movements that help me. And I, I just came back from a ski trip and I fell three or four times and knock wood. I didn't break anything, but I think exercising improves your balance as well and can prevent you from falling. And they've also associated dementia and Alzheimer's with um, uh, lower amounts of fitness in your, in your schedule. And the last slide, please. Healthier body, body, healthier mind. I really believe two and two go together. You'll have a healthier mind if you have a healthier body. You'll have a healthier body if you have a healthier mind. So it's like enjoy, break bread with others, make eating a real event. Try not to be on your own when you're eating as much as possible. And it's really a very, very strong connection. So I've given you a lot of information today. I think we're going to see if there's any questions before I go on to my cooking demo, which actually is very, very quick. And I think you'll enjoy it. But all I always ask people to do is after a presentation is if there were two things that stuck with you, write it down now and go home with it. And feel free to email me or get in touch with me, rose at rosereisman.com. And let me know how you're doing. Thank you. So if we have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Thanks, Rose. Um, at the moment, we don't have any in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to proceed and, and we can again, um, feel sure. free everybody, yeah, if you'd like to put a, a question into the chat and we can start going through them as you move along through the demo. Excellent. All right. Okay. So I, you'll see I have a camera set up here where my hands are and I'm over here. So I'll try to do a little bit of both. This is a wonderful dish that's called a sheet pan dish. And sheet pan means you take a cookie sheet like this, put some parchment or foil paper on it. If you use parchment, you don't have to spray it. And you're gonna put everything on here and it's gonna cook for 10, 12 minutes and you will be um, finished. All right, and I have an assistant, Dan, who is gonna be here with me. So I'm gonna start out with some salmon. So this is the meal for probably two people. I've got a big, about eight to 10 ounces of salmon. And remember we talked about protein being so important. I'm actually, sorry, I'm gonna keep it in the bowl. I'm gonna mix everything in this bowl. I bought some butternut squash at the supermarket, as you see here. I just diced it a little finer. When you're cooking it all together, if your salmon's done, 
before your butternut squash, not a big deal. Just take out the salmon and let this cook a little longer. So I've got a couple cups in here and I say this would serve easily a couple of people or have it the next day. Then I have some asparagus that I've, I've chopped into two bit pieces to put in here. So far so good. And now all I'm going to add is a little bit of uh, what I call my dressing. I have a little bit of Dijon mustard. Rose, Yes. would you mind moving the bowl over just sure. a little bit? To, yeah, like there you go, perfect. Uh, I've <laughs> added some you. Dijon mustard. I've got some, oh, we talked about our olive oil. Yeah, maybe, Dan, you'll give me a little more. I spilled a little bit. You'll give me a little bottle of olive oil there. And I've got a little bit of honey. And might need to just put this in the microwave for, oh, just the bottle there, Dan. Dan, just the bottle over there. I'm just going to put this, my honey got a little hard. I'm going to put that in for 10 seconds. Always nice to have a microwave right behind. Okay. There you go. I'm going to put a little bit of honey in here. And I mean, any sauce would go, but this is a really flavorful sauce with the honey, the little bite, sweet and savory with the Dijon. I'm going to add, this is some oil that I've put into a bottle. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil because I did spill some. And then up to you, I'd like to add a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of pepper. You saw that was all I added, not a lot. And then we're just going to mix this up with the salmon's in here already. Just toss it together like this. You could do it on a flat plate as well. And then I'm just gonna take my veggies out, put them on one side, just like this. And you're gonna preheat your oven. See, it, it's so fast, your oven won't even preheat. You're gonna preheat your oven to about 400 or 425 degrees, which I've done. And we will see in terms of how you like your salmon. I always prefer mine a little undercooked, but most people like it more cooked. So if I was going to leave this in, very easy how you judge it. You look at the thickness of the fish, and this looks like about an inch and a half to two inches, 10 minutes per inch. So I think I'm going to put this in for about 15 minutes, and then you check the salmon when it comes out for your liking. And if the veggies are not soft yet, not to worry, because you can then just add a few more minutes to it. I'll just okay. And I might just put a little more pepper on my, on my salmon for color. All right, that's it. So we're gonna do the magic of Zoom or magic of TV. We're gonna pop this into an oven, but I have one finished to bring out to show you. So we'll put that in there for 15 minutes. There we go. All right. So here's my finished dish, if you can see it already. Is that a good view? Let me get a plate. Yes, that looks great. Yeah, it's, it's really lovely. And salmon is something the next day that you can um, eat the next day and just have it at room temperature, which is lovely, or throw it into a salad. So if that's too much for you, you eat according to what, but remember, we're saying more protein fills you up, all right, which is what we want so that we're not hungry and eating processed uh, packaged foods. There we go. And just like this, you could put a lovely little wedge of lemon on that if you'd like. So, I mean, that's a beautiful dinner right there. The reason I didn't give you any grains or pasta was basically because I had the butternut squash, which is a starch. But this is a lovely meal. And if there's any questions, I'd love to hear from okay. you. Sure. Um, I have a question from Barb. Uh, uh -huh. She says she's using tempeh and tofu as a protein alternative as shown in the, the new Canada yeah. Food Guide. Is there a limit on these choices that you can have per week? No. I mean, if you're eating vegetarian now, like they, there are some studies that show soy protein could have a connection to estrogen-based breast cancer, but only if that runs in your family or if you've had breast cancer in the past and you want to you wanna keep tofu and soy products down to once or twice a week, but there's no concern. Um, I have a daughter that eats tofu and, and soy products virtually daily. Okay, great. And if you could substitute chicken with this as well. Okay. 
And um, sorry, Lori is asking if there's a replay of the uh, recording for today. So yes, that will be uh, emailed out to all registrants after the session today. Um, so happy to share that with you. And Rose Angela is asking if you can remind us what was your newest cookbook? Uh, the last cookbook was Meal Revolution. And I love that book because it's based on the most updated Canada's Food Guideline cookbook teaching you what I'm doing today is basically what that book talks about. Okay, great. And, and you can, Amazon has that all. Oh, okay. And also, um, have you written a cookbook that is designed for people eating as one or two? I haven't, but in all my books, I always tell people, most of my recipes will serve about four. Okay. I say divide it in half. And honestly, I love like, you know, my husband will eat this tonight for dinner and um, tomorrow I might have this over salad for lunch. So I always say, if you cook a recipe, if, if a recipe says serves 10, don't make it. My recipes virtually all serve four and I divide it by half and I've got lunch the next day or dinner the next day. Leftovers is fine. I don't like leftovers for more than two days, but I think <laughs> using this as a salad, I could throw this into a, a big salad of greens would be a fantastic meal. Okay. Um, and Rosalie is asking whether the recipes will also be available. So yes, I think we'll be able to yeah. uh, send those out to everybody along with the recording. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just check here. One more question. Uh, oh, uh, what was the temperature of the oven when you uh, made four this dish? Now. 425? Yep, 425. Okay. You can cook salmon anywhere from 375 to 425. Okay, great. And for how long was it again? Um, okay, so what I always do is look at the salmon, 10 minutes per inch of thickness. So okay. if you look at this piece of salmon right there, that looks like about an inch, inch and a half. So I gave it about 15 minutes. And okay, it was and that's the same, that's good for the vegetables too? Yeah, yeah. Now okay. I found this butternut squash was a little harder. So I would take out the salmon and leave that five more minutes. Okay. So you judge the vegetables. I mean, I love my vegetables slightly undercooked. Some people like them very soft. Right. So for me, I added five more minutes to my veggies. Okay. Um, lots of thank yous. It looks really okay. good. I think okay. we're, we're good for now. Uh, if you All wanted right. to go ahead with go the on next the one. Sure. Okay. So then let's get the second one together. We'll move this aside. I'll leave that out there. This is a great one. I love this one too. Get this over here. Amazing what you can do on zoom. Hi huh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> While you're doing that, what kind of, uh, if you were going to add salmon to a salad the next day, what kind of yeah. a dressing would you have with that? Um, you know, you can always make your own dressing very easily just with some uh, oil, uh, olive oil, some balsamic vinegar or lemon juice, some garlic, salt and pepper. That's really easy. If you like the creamier dressings, you, I mean, I just avoid Caesar salad dressing because I call that heart attack on a plate. <laughs> and so many calories and so much fat. But you can get nice lighter dressings that don't have a lot of processed ingredients. Like Renee's, for instance, makes pro beautiful dressings. She's got a whole line of light dressings that are very, very healthy and okay. um, all different flavors. So Great. look for in your supermarket or as I say, just make... You can even use a Greek yogurt with some lemon juice, olive oil, garlic for a creamy dressing at home. Really okay, easy. great. Um, before we move on, so one quick thing, I wondered if you could move your um, skillet over to your right a little yeah. bit. That. And then I do have a question from uh, Margaret as well, wondering, are there some types of fish that are better than others for seniors? Um, you know what? Fish altogether is great. If you're looking for leaner fish, you want to go to white fish. Here's the problem with salmon. And we all know that today. Salmon, tuna, mackerel, shark, they have mercury, right? And PCBs. That's the contaminants unless you buy organic. Organic tends to be very expensive. So I've always been told by other nutritionists that it's better that you eat the fish than not, but I wouldn't consume um, farm-raised salmon five days a week. You know, for me, I don't buy a lot of organic because of the expense, but I do buy Granny Smith apples that are organic because I eat apples every single day. So if you eat strawberries or berries every single day, there's a lot of 
pesticides on it so you want to buy her again if not you stick to a nice uh white fish like a rainbow trout a lake trout's lovely um though i mean i, I prefer the salmons and tunics i find they have more flavor but uh certain white fish like the trouts are lovely so you can buy those without the same concerns okay and do you know anything about sable fish sable yeah that's matt yeah. um sable is also known as um not sea bass. What's the other one? There's sea bass and there's, hold on. There's two fish that I always confuse. Sea bass and what's the one we always bought, Dang, Not the, the white That's fish. The oh, I forget the name. But yes, yeah, sable's another name for sea bass and, oh, it's making not me Not pickerel. Crazy. I'm going to start no. to rhyme off some. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sea bass. And, give me one second. Sure. Here, I'll look it up and you get cooking and I'll, I can... Uh... Oh, I think oh, it's sea bass. Sea bass, or what's the other one? Oh my goodness, I, I used to always buy it. I loved it. The no, no, sea bass or the big fat one. It's it's very. Oh, a black pod. Black pod. Thank you. Oh, black okay. Is sable. So when you hear sable, that's the same as black cod, an outstanding fish. But oh. price like crazy today. Like one piece is twenty eight dollars. It's ridiculous. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bev, little... Sorry, Bev, you added that into the chat, and I missed it. Thank you. Yeah. So there, I knew it was on the tip of my tongue. That was making me crazy. So All is right. that good for you as well? Just that yeah. was the question. Was whether sable fish is okay? So now I'm going to show you a lovely dish for those that like grains, and grains are great. Remember when we talked about whole grains? So all I did is I went and I bought, as you can see here, a rotisserie chicken at my Metro. It was like, I think $10, $11. I could get so many meals out of this and maybe you don't want that many meals, but I took about a cup and a half and diced it up. And then I made um, a cup of brown rice. So I used brown rice because that's where the fiber, the vitamins and minerals are. I know we're all white rice lovers, but honestly, when people are overweight at times and they eat a lot of white rice, especially in Asian communities, Philippine communities where rice is eaten a lot, people complain about weight gain, it's because they're mostly eating white rice without enough protein and vegetables. So I've made brown rice here, it's gonna fill me up more. In my skillet that you can see, I'm just sauteing some onion. You feel free if you want, you could put in some garlic, I didn't. I just put a little bit of oil in. And then to this, I've cooked it for about five minutes. Um, I'm now going to add, you virtually add almost everything. I'm going to add my rice. Okay, so this is so easy. And you can use leftover rice. It even makes a nicer fried rice the next day. But when you eat fried rice in, um, in a restaurant, Chinese food restaurant, you're getting often lard. Uh, you're not getting the healthiest ingredients. You're getting tons and tons of salt. So you'll see here, I'm gonna let salt just happen in the sauce. I'm now going to add my chicken to warm up. Okay, so nothing could be quicker. And just, you know, even before you go to bed, 15, 20 minutes to cook the brown rice, that's it. I'm going to add some green peas. Now, the other thing I like instead of green peas, if you love the soy, is to do some edamame. And as this warms up, I'm then going to use, I'm not gonna make a sauce from scratch, because that's too much effort, too much work. You don't want to do that. I'm just going to buy a hoisin sauce, and there's now gluten-free hoisin sauce or uh, teriyaki sauce. There is sodium in here, but I'm not adding any extra salt to this dish. And it calls for just about a quarter of a cup. That's it. Okay, and you're just going to do this until it warms up. All right, and voila, that is virtually it. You'll taste it to see if, you, if you're happy with it. You won't need to add any salt because the hoisin has got enough sodium already. If you were gonna make this sauce from scratch, you'd be using basically sesame oil, garlic, ginger, um, soya sauce. So this way it's quick and a bottle like this will last you a long time. Really, really nice. I might add just a little bit more. And then I'll try it. You always want to try it to make sure that it tastes good. And then I'll serve this up and we can answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from Lois. Um, she says she's been using 
um, Epicure spices and eliminated almost all site, uh, sorry, salt from her diet. Fantastic. Her question is around ground meats like lean hamburger, poultry, and pork. Are they a good choice? Um, of course, everybody's finding, uh, and Lois as well, that meat is, is very pricey these days, especially for her up in Northern Ontario. Um, so she tends to use ground meats instead of the whole yeah. cuts. So what are, what are your thoughts on that, Rose? I think it's great. Go for lean ground beef. But the difference of lean and medium is huge. A lot of saturated fat in medium or regular. So the lean is good. And here's a trick. If you're making meatballs or hamburgers, it might be a little dry. So what you want to do is add some oil to the ground beef when you're mixing it together with your egg or other seasonings and breadcrumbs. So this is probably too big a dish for someone. <laughs> That's a bit, but you know what? People love it's whole grain, it's got protein, you've got the fiber, great choice of a meal. And, and you could dress it up if you're really wanting, add bell peppers, add more color to it as well. Great. Really good. Mm. Oh, and that sauce is fantastic in there. What did you add on top? A bit of parsley? Oh. Top green onions. Top green onions. Okay. Um, Rosalie is asking, what, what brand of brown rice do you use? Um, you know what? Uncle Ben's is great. I love a bag of Uncle Ben's. It's fabulous. Okay. And you can use. Sorry, what was that? There's different brown rices you can use. Oh. Find one at long grain or a short grain. Right. Okay. Uh, no other questions at the moment. Lois is thankful for your answer about the meats as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. So, so two easy meals. And, um, yeah. you know, slowly, I, I, I think this is a way to go, especially, you know, not only at, as we age, if we're, if we're living on our own or we have a busy family. You know, my, my daughter has three children under the age of seven and her life is crazy. And I always just say, eat healthy eat the least amount of processed foods you can. That's the key. And make sure you get a protein, a grain, vegetables and fruit in every day. And that is the key to, to a, a, a very healthy body weight, stronger bones, and in general, a, a sharper brain as well. Great. Um, and so Rose, since you've, you've purchased um, the uh, cooked chicken, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, uh, with uh, so you purchased the, the pre cooked chicken. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on how else people might be able to use that if they made the recipe that you just made today and that uses oh. maybe a, a quarter or a third of the chicken? What else could you do with that? Uh, the other thing that I love is I mean, you know, depending on omelets are not a breakfast, I'll often do an omelet and put diced chicken into it, I'll do fajitas. So instead of me buying a boneless breast and cooking it up, I, I use this for fajitas if there's just a couple of people over. So you could use it in casseroles. Macaroni and cheese is delicious with diced chicken in it. So, I mean, I'm a chicken lover. I love it. And it's a lean protein, much healthier for you than red meat. So there's lots of uses. And, and if not, I, I could take even half of it, wrap it very tightly and freeze it for, okay. another, for another day. Not a problem. Right. Um, can you, Sharon's asking if you can use quinoa instead of rice oh, in fantastic. that recipe. In one of my books, in Meal Revolution, I have a fried quinoa instead of, instead of fried rice, it's fried quinoa and I have edamame in there and I have chicken in that. So the quinoa would be outstanding here. Okay. Uh, Margaret is asking, what types of fruits should I add to a weekly grocery list? If you oh. had your, your pick. Well, so you want, you want to look at the fruits that have the least amount of sugars. So let's say mangoes have a lot of sugar, uh, watermelon, cherries have a lot of sugar. So I go for the melons. I love cantaloupe. I love um, the green melon. I love berries when they're affordable. Um, apples are fantastic. Pears are great. Um, what else? Let me see. Would you categorize oranges as the sweet? Yeah, oranges yeah. are great. Tangerines are great. I love buying the little tangerines. They're perfect, so there's no waste. Um, avocados, remember, are fantastic, but they're very high in calories and fat, but good fat. So a whole avocado is 300 calories and 30 grams of fat, but it's not going to give you a heart attack. It's not going to build plaque in your brain. It's a great vegetable, but if you're trying to lose weight and you're eating an avocado a day, you might want to be aware of that. 
but really the citrus fruits, the apples, the oranges, uh, the melons are your key fruits that are lower in calories and less sugar amounts than some of the others I mentioned. Okay. And we have a little tip in from Lois as well, back on, on the chicken, uh, that she makes low sodium soup uh, yeah. using roast chicken um, in the soup. Oh, that's Usually great. Chicken vegetable with rice. Mm -hmm. That's great. So that's a good option too. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Lois. Great. Well, we've got uh, lots of good positive comments coming in, Rose. Uh, no further questions at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, wondered if there's any anything you'd like to say as we close out for today? Um, you know what, just if, if you're starting fresh with eating well and exercising, take your time. It's not a race. And I think everybody can improve their eating or exercise somewhere along the road. We all can. And the key is to start slow. Take anything that I've said today, if you walk away, as I said, with two different things that you might be able to do tomorrow, if you just drop those fast food meals, those processed meals, one day a week, because I don't know what people are eating, but I know people, I see the lineup at Tim Hortons, I see the lineups at McDonald's, I get concerned when I see that, especially as, as we're aging. If you can try to cut even one day out of that, you've done a big, big thing. So take the changes slowly, move what you know the weather's getting better get out and walk around the block if you have any exercise machinery at home get on it let's not use it as a as a clothes hanger and just um get a couple things going right and you'd be shocked at how this all connects and makes that train just move more slowly great rose thank you again thank for you. taking the time today this was such a a fun session for us today, very interactive. And thank you to everybody for your, your questions, your attention and your interest in the topic. And I hope that I, I know that I learned quite a bit. Uh, I'm about to become an empty nester myself. So I'm, oh, I'm, I'm happy to hear all of this advice for uh, smaller meal making and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So thank you again, Rose. And Thanks. yes, again, just to remind everybody the recording will be emailed out to you along with the recipes as well. Okay. Take care, Thanks everyone. Look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks.